Welcome to Charter Communications Local Edition. It's a program where we feature the incoming senators and representatives for the 2015 Montana Legislative Session, which will begin in January. We're in Helena, Montana today at the State Capitol. I'm Mark Staples, your host, and we just finished, within the last couple of hours, the leadership races for both the House and the Senate. And our guest for this segment is the representative from House District 51 in Billings, uh, Mark, I'm going to call you Marky. Is That's it Mark right. G? Or That's Mark right. You got it the, right. The hard G or the soft G? It's Mark, the hard G. Hard G, Marky mm -hmm. McDonald, who, congratulations, was Thank just you. elected the one of the House Minority Whips. Correct. So that's, that's exciting. So uh, t tell us, before we get into that job, tell us how you, get your personal background uh, for viewers mm -hmm. who aren't in Billings yeah. and how you came to get from there to politics. Well, you know, You're I'm in your third, fourth term. Fourth term. Okay. In my senior year. Senior year. As okay. I tell people right. on the doors. Uh, yes. Um, I grew up in Montana, uh -huh. out in the Yellowstone Valley, and I still live there, although I grew up in eastern Montana, real eastern Montana, Glendive. Yeah, people think Billings is eastern Montana. It's yeah. Not, yeah. Home of Makoshika State Park and the mm. Dawson County Red Devils, but yeah. I now represent south and west Billings, which in a way has a lot of the same families, a lot of the same demographics of my hometown, and I have the north bank of the Yellowstone River in my district, and I've lived on the Yellowstone River almost my so entire life. So you just life. come on the river yeah. from home, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I got into politics because I love the state, and I think that there's so many things we can do to carry it forward. I'm a mom, and um, I care a lot about the future, about what my children will inherit, and hopefully someday I'll have grandchildren to think about. And no pressure on the kids. There. Yeah, no just, pressure. Just, 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 please tune in and feel that pressure that mom is saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I seem to remember you from before. You were in these halls advocating for certain groups before you were right. a legislator, weren't you? I got to see the legislature up close and personal beginning in 1981 when I lobbied for a conservation organization, um, Northern Plains Resource Council. Mm. And then in the 90s, um, I registered uh, and represented Montana Association of Churches for about 15 years. Okay, that's where I remember. And yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I have seen process. it in process, and I always, I didn't ever think I could do better, but I thought I would like to be on that side yeah. of the table just because it's it's yes. really exciting to be a citizen legislator and and I realize how hard it is I think it looks easier from the outside oh. but it's a tough people job people have no clue <laughs> well now you're in leadership and we asked you to fill out like a question or what you'd like to talk about and you here's some of you that what you put down so Montana law and justice issues that's the whole rubric of what you put down and it started out with <laughs> interim study and package of bills on the parole board. Elaborate on that for just a second. I'd be happy we to. We can't go too in depth, but oh, okay. what do you mean by that? Well, I chaired the Law and Justice Interim Committee, and so one of our biggest pieces of work this year was to look very closely at how we handle the whole issue of parole and how we appoint the people who are in charge of that, how we support and equip them, and what kind of due process um, all sides of the process have, and how it is in um, translating into both public safety, but also that we are returning to the community people who are going to be productive, who are going to start to support their families and raise their children and hold down a job and pay taxes and do so in a way that um, helps them be contributing to society. And that board is very independent, isn't it? It, it doesn't has really great, answer to anybody, does it? Has it has great independence, more so than I'd say about 90% of the states. And is your focus maybe to bring that into somebody has oversight? Or we have a couple that. of things. Um, one is to um, set into statute the criteria to look at when it comes so that there's more consistency. Uh, I think that as we looked at the um, at the history, the recent history and, and the kind of um, experiences that, that the communities are having, we felt like there could we could do some work in terms of consistency. We also 
um, had a very big case in Montana, the Berry Beach case, right. where um, basically before they could even really consider the substance of the issues, they had a preliminary hearing. And executive clemency, which the governor has, um, has to go through the um, portal or um, they're the gatekeepers for that. Yeah. And they've been very, very restrictive compared to many other states. And so we have a bill that would give the governor a little more reach into um, executive clemency. And it's it's an ancient, you know, old And from the outside law looking practice. in, maybe I didn't I really pay attention to this. It looks to be that you're not on your lonesome on that. That that's kind of a bipartisan effort. Is it is correct? a bipartisan effort. It's really fun in a way to work on the interim because the committees are structured, you know, even Stephen. Right. They never know out of the elect next election who's going to be in the majority and who's going to be in the minority. So that's an old tradition we have. And what it means in the interim is I think there's less partisan jockeying. Who's going to carry your bill? Um, I'm going to carry the executive clemency bill. Okay. We have um, basically about six bills, one of which is just to basically film and keep, you know, a, an audio and visual record of the hearings so that oh. when someone comes back and said, boy, someone was really rude and wasn't, you know, didn't behave appropriately in one of these hearings, people can say, well, we can look at that, you know, and that, I think that's going to resolve a lot of issues. I didn't quite understand this, um, uh, but that's me. I'm a little dense sometimes. Following up on re-entry and other initiatives. Okay. What, what do you mean by re-entry? In 2013, I carried a bill that came out of the previous interim to really start focusing state resources on people who are re-entering the community oh, okay. from the correctional system. From, oh, okay. And what we are finding in many states is that um, is that the uh, States that are looking at carefully who's coming out and who maybe with a little help, maybe it's transitioning into uh, um, health care, mental health services, medicine, things like that, that they will actually be successful. They mm -hmm. will not land back in the correctional system. That that little investment can make a huge payoff, not what only is the financially. Re recidivism rate? Well, in, in Montana, I think it's in the high 40s. Uh, uh -huh. Last last time I looked, and in many states have dropped that down, you know, cut it in half by figuring out who needs help. Not everyone needs a lot of help. They get, they're fine. Mm. But if you look at the high-risk people who are not a risk to society, but more, you know, to, to sort of just falling back into their old ways and help them get stable housing, help them get a job, help them get their legs under them so they can be contributing members of society, that you can save a lot of money in the long run, plus you have citizens who are a part of the community and contributing. So it's a real good investment. Well, we could talk for hours, and hopefully we will sometime. Yeah. But right now we're going to wrap it up. But I, I want to thank you, Margie. I know that you've been involved in public service from both sides of it for a long time, and it isn't an easy job no matter what anybody thinks. It's a tough job, particularly if you're coming all the way from Billings, mm -hmm. the winners, and the interim committees and so thank you for serving thank you for electing thank you. good luck in your leadership position you're going to be you. a lot busier and now you, you know it's up to you yeah some way but you'd like that anyway we i want to thank you for coming you. visiting with us and i want to thank the folks for tuning into these broadcasts and you know what if you see these and you appreciate them whether you agree with the positions that the legislators give you see them on the streets thank them for serving because uh they're doing our work for us. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Mark.